today you may be like if you if you see uh, if you buy from amazon or flipkart you will see that gives you frequently brought items right today you may, may be buying some one product and basically based on the historical behavior what that does a customer who has brought uh, supposedly uh, a tv may also be inclined to be buying those set of the allied stuff like which are linked to setting up the tv or something around that or maybe those who have bought a tv also have uh, bought a kind of a music system with them say so historically this has been done and now what exactly the recommendations that comes under you like if supposedly you have buying one product they will give you the top five or six set of the recommendation this is called a cross selling of the product so bundling. cross selling or product bonding is basically today i buy a product how i can actually increase the share of wallet of the same customer to buy into something which will be more interesting for him right this is called a increasing a share of wallet the second part is like upsells is more of like today i am buying a brand supposedly uh, just give you a quick example maybe from the apple uh, section uh, someone buying a lee cooper and someone maybe on the very premium uh, brand so there can be two difference into it so, so some uh, supposedly someone knows okay the normal price that this customer buys jeans is say 1200 or 1400 but if i can move this customer into the high premium uh, kind of an, the product in the same category so definitely he will be buying jeans or shoes but in a premium brand so this is called a upselling of a product so how you do that so basically now they will tell okay uh, maybe that premium brand the original price was 800 now if i need to win this customer and switch this customer from brand x to brand y so i will do is give them 10 percent off and this is how you are actually uh, increasing the share of wallet the thought process is if someone like supposedly from the brand perspective once you upgrade right it's very difficult to come back to the uh, to what you were buying so basically the this is a called a psychological thought process where you from a lower end product you try to buy more of a higher end product uh now this is more of like probability and things that we are going to talk about so this is how you do historically how you see how many number of products a and b bought together how many brought a together so basically all these combinations and this will give you more of understanding how this recommended or recommendation systems gets created here so this here we are going to talk about more of this uh next part is more of like marketing 360 degree where we have kept this like uh because very important to know because it's the four P's of marketing. So marketing in terms of product price and promotion place. This is the four things. But here three things like all of the uh, in terms of any of this retail space, any of this e-commerce space, everyone uh, tries to go for one thing like which are my top selling products. So do I have the right product? uh product sets or like you know which are more customer centric like always the question is like there can be n number of products you could keep but do you have the right range do you have the right this is called assortment analysis so here you uh, see in the next part what we are doing is a right product means or the assortment analysis so basically assortment optimization it talks about number of products supposedly in bread you have 10 or 15 variants you may not require all the 15 variants to keep right so what you can prefer you can prefer for bread you keep 10 uh, 10 variants for jelly you can prefer like out of 12 operating uh, uh, say uh, 12 operating this is called sq that is a stock keeping unit uh, so you have 12 kind of invariants maybe eight is relevant for you so this is called how you set up the how you different different set of the product how you optimize and tell this amount should be important and the second part is more of like a uh, uh, lot of companies they also look into nelson data like nelson data what it talks about like maybe you are not aware of some new market trends so in some categories supposedly in healthy so you see that nowadays it's like more of like olive oil and these things has going well supposedly for any of the e-commerce you have all kind of an uh, olive oil but there is a new specific extra virgin olive oil or something that came into the picture and you don't have that kind of product in your, in, under your kitty it, it means that there is this kind uh, there is a difference in your this is called a product gap analysis so now 
basically you will understand okay if you are not your competitor might be have uh, you know might have that product but you may not so there you need to think okay maybe this is a kind of a neat product i need to uh, have uh, in my inventory so it's more about understanding the right set of the products and things around and next comes into the price and the promotions basically uh, this is called a market mix modeling so a lot of industries that what it does is uh, i'm not going too much into the statistical part right now so because then it will be difficult for you to connect some things uh, status uh, this uh, this other things is more around you have different promotions running supposedly you are promoting into say a lot of e-commerce like Facebook, Twitter, Google, you are promoting as well as you you are giving on into newspaper advertisement and you are doing some kind also into different channels you are promoting your product, right? And what you need to understand is like whether my promotions, what I am running or whatever the mechanics it can be. So is it because since promoting is the means that you are investing here and what a company needs to do understand is like whether whatever the investment i am doing is it directed in the right direction so they need to see where you are getting the maximum uplift we call in industry world or the benefit like if i am investing into a promotion that i am running in the store supposedly for any app you talk about uh, for any category they are giving you uh, 40 percent off or some they are giving you buy one get one free or someone giving you a combo offer like if you buy cooking oil uh, rice and say, flour and sugar and also they they prepare your monthly grocery pack and they said like save 500 right so this 500 while save 500 is basically if you consider if you have not given the offer so basically you are losing 500 in a way i will tell so if you add up all the cost prices so that this combination if you have given got the offer you would have paid around 2000 right now the same you are paying for 1500 with a when we are going with a combo uh, combo offer what does it ensures is like this 500 our retailer is losing from his pocket so what they want to understand if i make the discount from 2000 to 1500 so what a retailer will uh, want to explore is more of volumes so more of volumes will compensate the loss of margin because supposedly a product of product a which had a cross price of around 100 now you normally you sell it around 90 now what you are doing by the this discount you are selling it at an 85 say so uh, if the cost price sorry my bad if the cost price was 80 and uh, the cost price was 80 initially you used to sell it for 90 now you are selling it for 85 so initial difference was around 10 now the net difference now after the giving a promotion offer now the difference is 5 rupees now for the 5 rupees what they expect is this product should be of a high elasticity is basically elasticity is nothing but your change in the price and your change in volume so it's been said if you drop your uh, drop, drop your prices you will see that your volume or demand will shoot up so what they expect is more number of quantity or units will get sold and uh, at the net as a result it will be more profitable business for you so this is something a retailer needs to understand and ask like it's, it can be any e-commerce or anything so they try to evaluate all the things so whichever mechanics is working for them and which is not the next part we're going to talk about a campaign analytics the slide which i was showing so basically this is uh, if i talk about uh, this so every of the every of the campaign uh, is basically if you see that they once you define the segment so here is, is what they distinction that they did here woman between these years working salary days having children watching a channel so on and so forth this is how the target audience been set up now what it does a campaign means like today you want to supposedly if you uh, you will see if you run to any grocery store or anything maybe garnier or l'oreal they always do some kind of a product testing right they give you free samples or things around that so they have a kind of a set in mind okay this is the target group i want to set up and they want to 
tiff you with the product or they might be giving you a product at a very discounted price objective of doing the same is like whenever these are the campaigns right these campaigns will allow them to get more customers in the business and some of them will be a brand loyal for them so this is how campaign analytics come into the picture whenever i tell that i do few things supposedly today you see that uh, you need to know how in store experience supposedly you shop in a uh, go to a grocery retail or any supposedly any of the uh, electronics house there can be different uh, in store experience uh, means like the way they put the platters the standees the kind of an uh, decorations they does so that apparently looks even they have a better operations like they have more number of teams where you can do the checkouts they does a, a lot of uh, in store experience it's called just to give you that uh, nice feeling how does this campaign works against a store where they have not implemented the same so camp when analytics talks about so you have a target group you do few things around and you want to evaluate how does it went well so one part of it like campaign is like if you know in a campaign if you see a lot of companies like coke and uh, you know coke be it pepsi when they come up with a new product right they does this kind of a campaign they target a few set of the customers groups they will not roll out overall like when i mean by overall it's like there is something called national there is something called a taste and taste market so they select some taste market where they want to go for the trials and once you have a successful trial of the set of the products then it's more of like okay you can eventually roll it out so there is more of like understanding these campaigns how is these things will be working out so this part we are going to cover on the basics of the uh, campaign analytics last we are going to end up uh, uh with and price optimization as i said like different companies always wants to understand what is a price point like should i sell a, pr a product at 400 or should i say sell the product at under 349 so everyone expects to sell the product at a like if you talk about a snap deal offers or any of the you know like flipkart and all this at midnight sale offer or something they put those the <coughs> <coughs> they put those uh, discounts and uh, just give me a minute i just uh i'll just quickly get some water around It's basically it's more of understanding because a lot of analytics they also does a pricing analytics so it will be a flavor where where anyone who's interested to get into pricing domain pricing analytics or into your campaign analytics or customer or marketing analytics so this should be give them the real flavor of any of this industry the way this could uh, the course has been modulated here so ultimately we're going to end with the price optimization just to understand like what should be the price point you should be selling a product and what kind of net impact you want to see out of this so this is more on the content uh, that we have you know have uh, for this any questions you have uh, i want to know like uh, is this a marketing tool is for uh, only experienced sales like uh, sales people or uh, or profession pardon uh is this course for uh, uh, experienced people or freshers no no i think the way i'm structured this course so it can be any like if you know the basic things of the saas i'm going to cover the same because every other thing uh, the keeping it mind like the way because i'm not professionals will be a different thing right those who are already working but here the module will be such that you get all the basics of that is required from the statistical as well as the business understanding so everything will be done hand on from the saas part so i can yeah any other quick uh, tell me was, so i will yeah this i'll tell about me uh, like uh, i was already into it but into different domain i mean a uh, different technology actually and uh, i have recently trained on base saas i'm uh, so i'm uh, looking for a yes. job into 
as a fresh year so uh, how far this code mm-hmm. will be uh, useful for me to uh, get into sales uh, one part will be yeah uh, so you will be working like there are two things like even in the analytics there is something called a developer and the second part is a those who purely works into the analytical domain like for a developer perspective it's more of like playing around with the data sets data cleansing and things because for the organization i work with i don't need to play around with the database because that is the job of the data developers so they have those database architectures and everything and we get a clean kind of data which we then we go with the uh, basically the analytical part of it the way the code is been structured since it will be a real time data and the data that we will be using is more of a day to day like I, i will show you the data in some time it's more of like you could relate back to what you do it will help in terms of your understanding so i will not be talking anything on a statistical and analytical statistical uh, term at any way because this is something what i seen because you know that gives a disconnection they want someone talking statistics it's, it's it's not actually you know it helps so we are going to talk on a very layman's language what we will be doing here because from your experience since it will be a uh, you know a day to day kind of a cases that you see you could relate back to uh, you know relate back to your world and basically that will help you to develop your concepts the first part will be like understanding as a business case getting those things so we will be having those practice sessions and understanding of those things so that initially will be the first thing that we will be doing so the expectation will be that we are not that someone have to be a proficient into saas or something that is not expectation here this is will be based on giving you a live data sets and the projects that hello uh yeah yeah mm-hmm. hello yeah the projects that we are going to talk about hello can you hear me yes hello yes. yeah the projects hello? that we are going to talk hello yeah hello yeah i can yeah yeah i can hear you yeah the projects we are going to talk about is more of like from the perspective of what industry is looking for so because since i all myself i've taken the interview that in, in, and i've seen what kind of stuff do happens in industry so the specifically those areas we're going to talk about okay this is how the data set looks like this is what we need to do this is what the insights is coming so we will play taking more time in taking those so basically we will we'll be not be in a hurry of finishing things and doing the same we'll take that at a the time time that is required to understand the structure and the project the way it, it has been you know if you look into the module is like one by one so we will go one sequence once we understand this part then everything will be connected at the end of the day it will i think seven to eight projects will be coming out of that and if you have one or two main projects so which i will specify if you get two projects if you uh, do i mean go through it very nicely and do things around that should help you to get into with the industry plus what i will be what will be doing is like once we are in the in in the you know once we are closing with the why uh, once you are closing down over this part so basically what we will be doing is we will be uh, giving uh, like i will be training in more of the industry questions or the in, from the in from the perspective of the interview once you have the two or three projects we you looked into it so i will be mostly ask, taking some interview sessions so that you can no you get more accustomed to it like what kind of questions to do comes into the picture and uh, just get more confidence into this so this will be the thing definitely because i know it's coming from a different background different thing so that that is what the expectation is so i have not kept any there are one or two high level or advanced level things so where do you need some expertise thing so which i have not kept uh, in this module for now because that required bit of statistical knowledge so here everything will be done from the scratch knowing things from the business understanding plus real time like what exactly the combination we come up with and uh, all the statistical processes so basically this will be the things and plus in terms of whatever uh, job for the job opportunity we're opening because since i seen the industry how it goes around i have definitely some links i have here and there in terms of your it's not a, a kind of an commitment for an organization does we what we can provide what can assist like with the job openings i will be seeing definitely i will be you know giving it uh, uh, like to your that you can apply for the same so that will take some time because i think once the course gets completion you get more of hands on with the projects and uh, initially going uh, 
going into a big brand house may be a bit challenging but i will tell like uh, so basically once you get up a good like a meet to a, or a startup event to work with and then you eventually jump to an, a big uh, a consulting house that can be fine yeah okay so this will be pretty definitely this are the things that we are going to come up and since uh, the most for the first phase will be like helping you out getting those concepts ready understanding things making you ready for the interview sessions and uh, finally definitely though whatever the links you're going to see and what are links you have definitely will explore that as well so these are the key things obviously that we we try to do and help you out if you if you have some got some time and things i can show you with the data sets that we're going to have so just to give you a real time understanding or if you uh so it's, it's up to you like if you want me to show you the data sets and this is basically nothing but your normal saas base saas level data like when we talk about data merging data summarization the first part broadly will be around this you want me to take um, you through the data sets first or uh, you do whatever yes. whichever is what uh, data sets a uh, data okay. sets um I'll quickly i uh, just i think i could see one oh, muhammad uh hello uh yeah i see i can hear you i just opened the one sa sample data set yeah I'll, i will give you the sample i think i seen someone joined so that's what i try to okay uh fine uh if i go with the sample data here supposedly let me go around so here what you see that this is the transactional data what is the transactional data is supposedly you go and shop uh, in a uh, so basically if you, uh, you uh, go to a retail so have you got the receipts uh, like once you check out so you got some uh, like uh, based on your transaction you get some receipts right what does it contain any any idea uh the uh, the amount which i have uh transacted right. and the uh, phone number and some uh, atm details okay the so uh date right good so supposedly if you see here mm, done how are you with the data set just a sec give me a minute Hmm. supposedly let me uh, check one by one and uh, i can do a proc contents to check you through first i think just give me a minute Supposedly we have this data set. I've just merged the uh, date ID with this so that uh, it's easy for you to. Say now you see what are the variables that is got. Supposedly this is the first thing uh, we're going to talk about is a household key. So I will be taking uh, the sequence will be different bit. Household key is basically supposedly you go and shop. so you will be given a kind of a card so basically that is called a club uh, club card id or a customer card so any of the retailer will have the loyalty card basically it's called so where you will will be given a unique card identifier 
and you need to fill up with your gender your details maybe bit on, on the number of households or they may ask you about a date of birth where you reside so some details around that and your phone number and a contact details so this is a loyalty card every of suppose it does same thing in, in the loyalty card like if you talk about any e-commerce there also what you need to you need to enter your name your age your date of birth your mobile uh, number your email id and uh, basically their uh, marital uh, stuff uh, gender and income uh, something you can give you may not or occupation right this is called a customer kind of a details that you're going to have so this is a, a first thing that it definitely it will be not be reflected in your uh, in your uh, uh, in your transaction data but a transaction data what it looks like is like i know this is a customer so it will give you a household key the second word you mentioned here is like a i am shopping from store id is basically identify the unique store so basically uh, if you talk about uh, retailers may have a different stores right so it's not within the case of like uh, supposedly for e-commerce what it happens is the same product if uh, if if uh, you have a different set of supplier supplier a b c d so that can be worked into here so here we have a store id which is a unique identifier here next it comes the product id is basically the product you are buying so product id will be the uh, supposedly i buy one unit often say butter or i'm buying milk or something so these are the lowest uh, kind of a level. So I want to talk about what a product hierarchy looks into it, but the lowest level it comes into the product ID. Then what we are going to ha have a basket ID. Well, basket ID is basically what exactly it looks like. Supposedly today I am going and I'm also going tomorrow, right? If a same customer is going to the same uh, store, in like today I'm going maybe in couple after a couple of days I'm going so definitely it has to be considered as a one visit so this is an unique ID or a proxy ID uh, that gets generated as an this is called a surrogate ID so where I can understand if a customer a if he goes into like uh, in a week or uh, he's, he's done two or three uh, three times he's visited so basically you can uh, you could understand by this basket ID, like how it how it set up the differentiation. And uh, next, what it uh, next what it comes into it's like the uh, say here you will have the total sales value, the quantity you have uh, you have got. So all those informations will be. So this is the most granular level of information. The data will be here. And now if I just going back to the data set, so here you see that this is a household uh, key. Supposedly, household key is nothing but this is the one customer say whose ID is two three seven five. Now, in the basket ID, that is your this basket ID is his one visit. In this one visit, this customer, if you see here, up to here, he has the same one four seven two. So this is a one uh, like uh, this household key or this customer in this one basket. So this is all considered as a one visit. In the same visit, one, two, three, four, five, he has bought five products. One, this will be different. Like up to here is same. So supposedly I go to a retailer and in day one I am buying five products. So all these one, two, three, four, five. The five products he is buying, the quantity is buying, what are the sales values got, and the store ID he has gone. And if he has got some discount, so discount amount and a transaction time and date. So basically, here you have the at 431 all the transaction been made now if you go here you are going to have the date so he has gone on 31st of march here so this is how the real data will look like so once you shop and the same set of the same customer in another like in the second visit uh, basically if you see he has bought another set of five or six items right now interestingly in the same day he has got but in a day one itself basically uh, which was nothing but 31st of march but if you see how these two significantly different in the first transaction was made at 431 but the second uh, transaction was made at 442 so there was a gap of around 11 minutes so that often retailers if you talk about a uh, per day so like now it, it depends like this will be considered like 
once you are there in the checkout tilt so in your know, basket one whatever you have so that your bill is going to get generated after that maybe you forgot something so again you came back to the store bought something and checked out so it will be considered as another visit so now it's, it's up to someone to spend per day you want to take or spend per basket you want to take so, so for those reasons we need to identify how frequently a customer is coming to your store that is why this basket diary comes into the picture so i need to understand number of times the customer has shopped say in the last one month or last uh, 13 weeks or one quarter so then and only you will know which customers are buying more frequently with you so that, that is how your basket or the transaction id comes into the picture sales i know the total sum of sales and things you're going to uh, you you can get around and the next thing is like a uh, household key now you get like there's a product id this product id is not telling me anything so what i could make it out like what exactly this customer is buying so there is something called a product hierarchy or a product structure supposedly uh, uh, just to give you an example when you when you shop and see the uh, shampoo conditioner this kind of section or supposedly if i give an example of a shower gel shower gel of nivea say this is your lowest identified you could do a retailer will tell this is my Nivea and this is this uh, supposedly uh, some kind of an uh, some flavor say mint flavor or cool some flavor and this is basically the low and this is up to a kind of a 200 ml pack and uh, this is a bottle something this will be the description of the product at a lowest it can happen but while you understand from the perspective of from the business like if i need to understand it can't go at a product level because for any of uh, of the e-commerce or all these houses it will be in like a kind of an uh, millions or it can be some 50 50 or 60 thousand of products right these set 50 or 60 thousand products we cannot take any decision in order to take and take the decision we need to roll it up now what is going to happen this shower gel will get eventually like it can be Nivea, it can be Palmolive, it can be uh, uh, it can be uh, Fiamma and all. It can be any of the brands, right? So now all these those who are into the shower gel, so all the products will be clubbed and uh, and set as a shower gel. And this shower gel will be again eventually shower gel, your shampoo, conditioner. This can be the three or four things that can be clubbed under say, uh, say bathing or sh or shower accessories. And these shower accessories can be a part of the health and the beauty section. So eventually, this is called a from lower level you get up to the higher level. And now this is called uh, like uh, uh, from bottom to top approach. So, so this will be at a lowest level, and eventually this thing will be rolled up at some higher levels. And these higher levels will allow you to understand a business in a very better way. So now, definitely for this product ID. If you merge, so one disadvantage like your transaction data cannot have all set of information together. So in order, this information in terms of this hierarchy will be in some other table just to save your time and basically optimizing the data uh, data, data size. If I go uh, into the product here, if you see the product, so here you will find this product ID is basically you have got some department like it's a grocery and it will be finally if you see the uh, see the commodity and the sub commodity is a lowest size here what it talks about fruit shells and stable this is an apple sauce bread bread italian and french uh, coffee instant coffee or flavor right and basically all of the product so everything is grocery here for pastry you see that this is a breakfast sweets and under breakfast sweets the further uh, drill down is a uh, sweet goods or uh, roasted and something like that so all of these Mm, like here for the meat section if you see meat is a higher level so meat can be chicken pork uh, anything here and then you see this is chicken and this is here you see the chicken boneless so this is the lower level uh, lowest level of the thing that it goes around and likewise if that product has got some kind of one uh, say supposedly if i talk about uh, um, basically Next. cold drinks and also we'll have the pack size and the brands if it's available so that also will be present here so now in order to understand the product attributes so what we will be knowing is like this product id if you have as i was talking about your behavioral kind of a customer segments where we were telling like what kind of products a customer is buying and how you classify them into different segments so that distinction will be coming into here 
what broadly we will be looking into it what kind of like makeup and uh, treatment if you see this makeup and treatment under cosmetics it's maybe lying right so here also if you see makeup uh, and treatment the other cosmetics section here and also this will be a maybe line here so basically there will be two different thing but the lowest level here is not very properly uh, two products are appearing to the same kind of a thing so again it could have got some kind of a lowest level description maybe line or something this so this is how your product hierarchy will look like like from from your top department is the cosmetics and what exactly it's about and finally to the move granular level of information so which can be basically your nothing but your product id description so this is more on the product table so now we could connect like if that customer is buying into product so what at a higher level he was okay he was 30 or 40 percent of the spend was from the grocery or something like that so now if i go back uh, i know the product id what i can make out is like i know the uh, if i go back to table here i know the household keys basically it's talk about a one customer but what we need to know from this one customer is like what are the details of this customer so we have a table which is going to talk about um here is your household key and you know that is male female or no kids how it looks like or the income group what is the marital status here and uh, what is the age and marital status plus income description and bit of the household uh, how many, uh, you know uh, kind of an, uh, what it comprises of uh, comprises of so basically a uh, kind of an holistic view of the customers more around their demographics more uh, more around the income group and so for these data sets will be available in order to get some meaningful insights out of it the first thing so since the raw transactional data from this transactional data you need to understand like if i talk about uh, a quick here quick view will be supposedly i have this transaction and i want to i am merging the data on the products what i am getting a department commodity and a sub commodity data sets now it's a holistic view of all your uh, in, in terms of the categories they were buying into it and now i want to understand so year one versus year two performance so there has been some kind of a weak number so which we used to uh, break into like which will be the how you understand the quarterly performance of the business so this will be the sad thing that we gonna do do like in terms of understanding the key kpis is basically year then count of number of baskets how many count of count number of customers were there total sales uh, what it what came around and basically this will be the first basic things of finding those kpis we'll start at that uh, lowest level so that we know what is happening so we will be spending some time in the sas and understanding the things and then actually going one at a time so now is basically if i give you an example like uh, in the excel we what we did was this was a session I taken for one of the students here. So like you have a review year, year one versus year two. So how many customers it have, how many baskets, total sales, and what is the percentage change? Like you see the total customers have uh, gone up by 33% as an impact. Your sales has gone by 50%. So how you understand this key metrics and you compare. And then you basically at your uh, at your high level, it was at an, at an, at an highest level, like what is the, uh, comparison between your sales contribution by your uh, different departments uh, what is the pain per customer for every department what is the penetration of the customer who are buying into it and how you actually get the percentage change with respect to the year on year so this will be the basic basic stuff we are going to talk about in the initial list. from those transactional data we are going to map with different like customer tables we are going to map with the uh, uh, product tables and get this meaningful information and the first part of it exercise will be more of getting those insights and deep diving those ideas so this is how the data will look like from here we will uh, we will start creating those um like for at a customer level we know their frequency of purchase we know like how frequently someone is ordering and also the spend uh, associated with it then we're going to create those loyalty segments using the same set of the data then using the uh, you know the categories they're shopping and all this information we are going to create those customer segments and then finally this uh, kind of an, those customers are going to leave the business and everything so all these things will be coming so we'll be using different data sets always like this will be the first data set and followed up with a couple of more data sets we will be also looking into uh, into here does it give you a, a flavor of the things we're going to do Yeah. Yeah. 
yes. yeah yeah any questions like you uh, is this helping or you want anything specific i need to uh, which you uh, which you want from my side Okay. Uh, no, nothing. No, uh, nothing for now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think uh, so. In this uh, the basic stuff is like we will be spending more time on the data sets, understanding those structures, applications, and everything will be centered around three, four data sets and how we do the things. So uh, broadly, first data understanding and applications is very important. That we are going to spend most of the time doing the things basics and it will be mostly like we want to cover all the basic things right and then we're going to move one by one so Ajahn, unless you are absolutely clear on things we will wait and we will do things you know until this gets clear so we'll not be in a rush of completing the sessions around that so absolutely no because i think the best thing is we need some time to understand and so that you can digest the same and you know once you have the things very clear at your mind it will be easy for you to go to the interview and you know represent the same so yeah, that will be the mostly the thing that we're going to work out around. Cool, that it sounds good. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, nothing, uh, uh, you know, no questions from your side? Uh, no, sir, did nothing for now, it's clear. Okay, cool. So I think uh, Shubra Jyoti will get back to you on um, the same like once you once you know in terms of if you're interested and if you think that it helps you so definitely you will discuss with you and like on the next steps around that oh sure cool thank you yeah thank you Suraj. thank you for the session yeah bye thank you so okay bye bye